This program is presented by WGBH Boston in co-production with WDCN-TV Nashville. Enterprise is co-produced with Learning Corporation of America. 357 at Radio 65, WSM, another beautiful day here in the country music capital of the world. And here's a brand new single from Terry Gibbs. Terry Gibbs launched her career two years ago with a smash hit called Somebody's Knockin'. Somebody's knocking, should I let me them, would you look at him? But to be a real superstar, Terry needs another big hit. Can she and MCA Records do it again? This week on Enterprise, the selling of Terry Gibbs. I'm Eric Severide. For years, the conventional wisdom was that country music had a strictly regional appeal. Its records were as popular north of the Mason-Dixon line as Harmony Grits, which is to say, not very. But in the 70s, as the music became more oriented toward pop and less toward its country-western roots, the audience and potential profit grew dramatically. Now the record companies are faced with a problem the entire entertainment industry, from Hollywood to Publishers Row, knows all too well to retain the old listeners while attracting new ones. These records must somehow be comfortingly familiar, yet new and different. Millions of dollars ride on their success. This week on Enterprise, we see how one particular record and its singer are sold in this mercurial marketplace. January in Nashville, Tennessee. Can't pay my rent Next week's paycheck Is already spent But I'll get along Cause I've got a song in my heart Terry Gibbs, blind since birth, is 28 years old. She's recording her third album in two years. Okay, I want to listen to the bridge again. Ed Penny is her manager and producer. Sonny, I think we ought to cut that turnaround in half. He's been in the music yeah. business all his life, but finding Terry was his big break. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Who in this world is a woman gonna trust? Your wheel of life keeps turning while your carriage turns to rust. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Okay, let's, let's do it again. Terry, let's forget the modulation. Good. Everyone will be happy about that. Oh, Ray, he packed his bags and he went far away. Terry is recording ten songs here, but only one will be released as a single in March. Picking the right one is a crucial decision in Terry's career. She is a great singer. Unfortunately, you have to be categorized. Radio stations decide on a format. <clears throat> they're going to be country, they're going to be middle of the road, going to be hard rock, soul, pop. You've got to start somewhere. And she has a good base in country. So the trick is to find a record that will satisfy the country stations, but not be a compromise. Just be Terry Gibbs. But Terry has to be more than herself. She has to be a saleable commodity. Nashville's country music industry is serious business with $500 million in annual record sales. MCA, Terry's record company, is a billion and a half dollar entertainment conglomerate. It's the big time. I worked around my hometown for about nine years in various nightclubs, the last of which was a steak and ale. I was managing a music publishing company. I just started working for them. And uh, one of my first duties was to listen to all the songs in the catalog. A tape of mine, which was kind of floating around Nashville, I'd, I'd been up there several summers in a row trying to get something going for myself, and my producer uh, found the tape. And I just slapped that tape on, as I'd been doing all day, and this voice came out that just killed me. I was about ready to give up about that time. I 
was tired of working nightclubs and was thinking about going into some other type of business, although I didn't know what I wanted to do. I thought maybe I might go back to school. I started checking around asking, who is Terry Gibbs? Nobody remembered. Nobody knew. The tape had arrived there some years before, and I, I couldn't get any information. I, someone said they knew she was a girl who lived somewhere in Georgia. I was about to give up when another tape arrived from Terry Gibbs. He contacted me and made arrangements to come down to the Steak and Ale and listen to me. I came back here, I talked to Jim Fogelsong at MCA Records, and I said, I have found a girl who is, I think, got a great voice. I'd like to produce her. A few days later, there's a photo session for Terry's new album cover. Her image is packaged as carefully as her music. I feel that too much attention has, has been put on uh, my blindness. I, I would really like for people to forget about it. I've always been blind. I was, I was um, been blind since birth, and I feel that that's the only thing that the only life I've ever known. I have nothing else to compare it to, and so uh, basically it has not hindered my career. A little more pensive, and looking slightly to your left. Believe me, Terry, you're the easiest part of this shot. You're doing great. As far as my career, I, I think I'd like to be in the music business for a long time. And of course, that's an effort in itself because you have to, have to keep putting out these hit records and, and uh, traveling on the road and this kind of thing. And I just want to be successful. Now, this is great. It looks natural. It leaves us plenty of room. And it's a kind of pose that's a, it's a provocative one. I think if anyone going into a store would see that, they'd pause a little longer looking at that to find out what it's about. March 2nd. Terry's new single must be chosen today. The pressure is on to pick a hit. We've narrowed it down to about four songs that would probably be the strongest. I made up my mind last night about 10 o'clock. Then I changed it about 11. Then by 2 o'clock this morning, I said, well, now I'm going to make a decision. And I decided on Ashes to Ashes. Then driving in this morning, I was listening to the cassette again, and I vacillated. I heard a song in my heart, and I said, hey, that, that's it. Now, that's going to reach a lot of people. I don't need you. And then as I got to the door, I was listening to I Don't Need You. I said, how could I miss it? I've got to go with that. And I want you all. At 11 a.m., Ed Penny goes to meet the MCA executives. They want a single that will boost Terry's career and create a demand for the album, where the real money is made. Jim Fogelsong, president of MCA's country division. As far as I'm concerned, I really lean to uh, Ashes to Ashes. Uh, I think it probably is the safest single we could put out. I, I just know that that's a top ten record. It's got a little the somebody's knocking feeling to it. I think without even consulting with the West Coast, we can, uh, as far as I'm concerned, Let's say it's ashes to ashes, and but that has the hook. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, who in this world is a woman going to trust? I think something really familiar like that, when it's put in a real tasteful or uh, commercial setting, I is a help. The minor chords in it make it reminiscent of somebody's knocking. Basically, we feel that with anything Terry does, if we can get a big country record, then we can... We have a good shot at, at going at the other markets, too. Ashes to Ashes is aimed first at country music fans who buy 15% of all records sold. But a country hit will sell around 300,000 records. A pop music hit, however, can sell over a million. Pop accounts for fully half of the market. So the trick for any country singer is to cross over to pop and appeal to both groups. Somebody's knocking. 
Perry's musical history is a short one. Initially, she had great success because she crossed over. Somebody's Knockin' sold almost a million copies, the album a half million. Everyone thought she was one step away from superstardom. Her second single was aimed at the same audience, but it didn't do nearly as well. Only 225,000 copies. Country radio thought it was too pop, and pop radio thought it was too country. The first single off her next album was I Wanna Be Around, an old Johnny Mercer tune. Pure pop, it sold only 110,000, and most country stations didn't even play it. Terry was losing her country base and not establishing a new one in pop. So her next single was Pure Country. Misery River sold only 125,000 copies, but got her back on country radio. Though Terry didn't have the sales of a superstar, she still made money. With royalties of 5%, Terry earned over $200,000 in two years. MCA earned over 600,000, almost a dollar an album and Ed Penny earned more than $250,000 for producing the records and is co-writer of Somebody's Knockin' a few cents every time a radio station played the song. It's wonderful to be as lazy as I am and to have a song that was written two years ago out working every day for me. It's, it's, it's wonderful because uh, I'm not doing anything with Somebody's Knockin' and it's out there getting itself played and uh, and I, I've been waiting for years for that. Late March. 60,000 copies of Ashes to Ashes are shipped to retail stores and wholesale distributors, like Music City in Nashville. Now the single must compete with hundreds of other records, so one of MCA's sales reps is already pushing it. All right, there's a couple of things on here that look pretty strong already. Uh, the Terry Gibbs record is... Uh, Looks like it's going to be pretty strong. They're starting to work it to radio this week and next week. So I've got to get them to get It's a lot like her. Somebody's knocking the first The single is also shipped to the industry's trade magazines, which will be the first to pass judgment on it. The staff at each magazine listens to 50 new singles a week, but writes reviews for only a few. We have a Merle Haggard on MCA. Now he's on uh, Epic. that. I like it. I like that a lot. Too. I'm not into Charlie really Pride, but I like that. Right I think here. the country, solid country stations will really like that. And the new Terry Gibbs. Misery River. It's a country River, one, though. The last, good. she's been too, doing too much pop stuff. I think that might be one of those records that grows on me. You know, you You want to hear at 8 a.m. in the morning when the sun goes out in the clouds. <laughs> uh. Sounds like a typical Terry. Ashes, Stick with the last one. So. I would say she's lost momentum uh, right now in her career, and I don't think she can afford too many more records that do not go into the top ten because she burst out of the box so fast. Um, so meteorically that there's no room now for her to backslide. The success of any record is measured by the charts in Billboard and Cashbox. If you're not on them, you're nowhere. The country chart acts like a conveyor belt. If Ashes to Ashes is a hit, it will take 12 to 15 weeks to get to the top. Its position will be determined not only by record sales, but also radio airplay. Airplay sells records. But country radio music directors add only two or three new singles to their playlist each week. To attract listeners, they need an identifiable sound. To attract advertisers, they need an identifiable audience. Nashville's WJRB plays up-tempo traditional country. At WSIX, it's mellow metropolitan country. And at WSM, it's traditional and contemporary country.
if I'm going to make a mistake on a record, make the mistake of not playing it rather than playing it, mainly because that listener is so close to that dial and can turn it, you can lose a listener at that point and then they can switch to another station. To me, it really has to make me sit up and go, hey, let's play that again. And if it doesn't, then if I don't want to hear it, I imagine there's thousands of people that don't want to hear it. There are 2,100 country stations, but only 100 or so report to the charts. For Terry Single to move up, these few stations must play it and play it often. MCA's Tony Tamburano is a master promoter. It's his job this week to get Terry Single played by any key radio stations as possible. Moment is everything. Part of my job is to be everybody's good friend. A dinner here, uh, a movie there, a bowling game, what have you. You know, whatever it takes. I'm just going to tell you about my Terry Gibbs record that we shipped to you. What's the name of it? Ashes to Ashes. Ashes to Ashes? All right. Appreciate it if you give it a listen, report okay. it for us, and play it. All righty, I'll do it. I'll put my good ear to it, Tony. Put your good ear to it, Don. You know, it's a good country, country record, and I know that's what you play. Early April, Terry arrives in Nashville from her home in Augusta, Georgia. Expectations are high. Boy, it sounded good, too. Ah, yeah, did it? Chills, just to hear it on the radio. Everyone seems excited about it, Terry. I think we've got... We've got a record this time. Well, I, you know, I really feel great about it. I feel that, uh, I think I, I feel as excited about this record as I did Somebody's Knocking, and that's, that's good. Maybe that's a good sign. Well, that's a good sign. Janet, calling about my Terry Gibbs record, honey. You are? Mm-hmm. Did you really like it? Yeah, I really did. All right, you're going to add it? I really did. Well, I guess I will. Well, good. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. What's going on? Oh, nothing. Just sitting here calling you about my new Terry Gibbs record. Uh, we sent you a brand new Terry Gibbs record. You get it in this morning's mail? On at 65. On at 65. All right. You like it that much? I took them over to Billboard and Record World, and I got the, the magazines in. I haven't read the reviews yet. All right, here it is. Uh, under the country top single picks. Terry Gibbs, Ashes to Ashes. There's an eerie quality to this number that's well suited for Gibbs bluesy tones. Mournful steel underlines the minor key lament. Does that tell you anything? I think they like it. I, I'm not sure. I'm not. It sounds depressing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I well, at least they, they like picked it. it. This is Janet. Janet. Uh-huh. Tony Tamburano. Yeah, this is Fine. How you doing, honey? I'm doing fine. What's going on? <laughs> right. What's going on with you? Oh, nothing. We're just sitting here calling about the Terry Gibbs record. Yeah, I listened to it uh, last week. All right. What'd you think? Well, um, it's a good song. It's just, it just didn't want me. It just didn't hit me real strong at that moment. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, that record really grows on you. The more you hear it, the more you're gonna like it. I, I need to get back up and listen to it because I really can't tell you. Why, right? You know what I mean? Well, I'd be anxious to call you back this afternoon and see what you think of it after you heard it again for the second time. Okay, yeah, I'm going to take it upstairs. I'm mean, this what I'm getting ready to do right now. Talk to you this afternoon. Okay, bye-bye. Okay, bye. April 24th. Ashes to Ashes hits the chart at 77 with a bullet, a symbol that means strong airplay. But will it make it to the top 10? To market her records, Terry spends a third of her time on the road in a rented bus. In New York, she does four promotional interviews and two shows in a day. Terry, what we'll be doing today is an interview for Country Close-Up, which is a syndicated radio show. Terry, wh where did you first learn to sing? Well, I, I really started singing when I was about three or four years old. I came from a, a musical family. Listen, dear, here's your headphones. You're going to say that that was John Denver with Calypso. Okay, tell him who you are again. You're having such a good time being the guest DJ? Yeah, it was John Denver with Calypso. I'm Terry Gibbs. I'm your guest DJ today on 1050 WHN. Boy, I'm having such a good time here today. I'd like to invite everyone to come out to the Lone Star tonight and uh, catch a show or either, of course, catch a live show on uh, here on WHN 1050 on your dial at 10.30 this evening. We'd certainly appreciate it. And it's 4.38. Live from the Lone Star Cafe, Miss Terry Gale. 
The Lone Star uses Terry's concert to turn a profit, and MCA uses The Lone Star to create exposure for Terry. Ashes, ashes, dust to dust. Who in this world is a woman trust? MCA has arranged a live broadcast on WHN and invited the New York media to see Terry perform. Artist shines is in concert, and hopefully the the reviewer and the radio stations will go back and talk about it on the air. Boy, did I see a dynamite show last night! Terry Gibbs was at the Lone Star, and she just knocked me out. While we're talking about Terry, here's one of her records. May first, Billboard gives Terry a 60, and its version of the Bullet. 9:25. Good morning, Nashville. Some time we went out there in another chance. And Phil Hunt here in the morning time. Glad to have you with us. We are featuring today Terry Gibbs' latest LP called "Some Days It Rains All Night." We'd like to feature the new hit single off this. It's entitled "Ashes to Ashes." Terry Gibbs. This week, MCA releases Terry's album, but it's her single that's being watched. It's starting out a lot faster than somebody's knocking it, but then Terry is a lot more established now than she was. At this point after three weeks or so with uh, somebody's knocking, no one had ever heard of her. May 8th, the record climbs to 55. My Terry Gibbs goes 45 superstar next week. Yeah, we're probably late on that. Okay, you think you might add it this week? I think so. All right. Look legit? Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a, you know, it's gonna be a record. People are saying another somebody's knocking, but we're not even worried about crossover right now. We're just worried about it getting on country. My Terry Gibbs, 45 superstar. Now, being that you're the only billboard station there, I need you now. <laughs> of course, I told Jackie that last week, but... <laughs> what do you think? I don't like it. I know you don't like it. May 15th, the single reaches 45, and Terry is out there promoting. I just got this new vest. It's a blazer. Oh, it looks nice. Well, I guess first we'll go up and say hi to everybody okay. on the air. Say hi All to right. Kenneth. That'd be okay. Sure. Okay. I've been visiting a lot of radio stations in the towns that, that we perform in, and uh, it kind of helps the, the disc jockeys when they uh, can talk to you in person so that it's not just another record. It makes them more apt to play the record when they know that you cared enough to come in and, and talk to them and do an interview and this kind of thing. We have a very special guest with us this afternoon, the, the winner of the 1981 Horizon Award by the uh, CMA, Country Music Association, Miss Terry Gibbs. Your new single is doing real well for you, Ashes to Ashes. Yes, it is. It's, it's moving up the chart like crazy. May 22nd, number 36 with a dollar sign, which means heavy sales. It's no time to hold back. Ed Penny has personally hired a freelance record promoter. Hey, Steve. How are you doing, Ed, my man? All right, good, good. Let's talk a little records over here. Did you get the Terry Gibbs record? I tell you, I've, I've played it uh, a good good bit of the country now, and it got some reaction back, and looks like it's going to be as big as somebody's knocking anyway. Now that I'm Ashes to Ashes is up in the charts, record sales are needed to get it even higher. The total so far, 39,000 copies. And then line 15 is a new Terry Gibbs single. MCA hires Ken Woods to hustle the 70 record stores and distributors that report to the charts. Are you going to get me in top 15? No. Oh, you're going to wait? No. Okay, then. Well, I'll let you off this week. The single moves to 30, but loses its superstar. The higher you get on the chart, the tougher the competition. Calling about the Terry Gibbs record. I just called to give you one last chance to go on the Terry Gibbs record. You going to go over some records? Yeah, this is Tom Rowland at Cashbox. You want top 15? June 5th. At 26, the single loses its sales sign. How are you feeling at, at this point on Terry? Terry Gibbs, Jerry Reed, and the Osmonds. Suppose you got the numbers from Monroe, Louisiana. You want to have dinner? Hi. How's California this morning? June 12th. At 24, the single slows to a crawl and loses its bullet. Why don't we take the top 15s first? How's she sound compared to last time? Be honest with me now. Any chance to get me in at top 15? Would you really consider that for me next week? Will you do me a favor? 
Would you care for maybe a station ID on Terry? June 19th. The single is still stuck at 24 on the cash box chart. When I spoke with Billboard, we had no increase in radio. We had no increase in sales reports on the record. And Billboard basically told me that the record was over with. June 26th. The single stops at 19 on the Billboard chart. Maybe people took it too much as a downer. Maybe that was uh, what was, or maybe the song was just not, uh, wasn't there. It wasn't something that the country radio listeners are going to relate to. July 10th, the single slips down to 99 in cash box. You know, for the last six or seven months or so, I've been traveling quite a bit on the road, and already I've had the chance to go a lot of places I dreamed about. And I've met an awful lot of nice people along the way, but you know, I guess when it's all said and done, there's really no place like home. And I want to do a song for you now that it's kind of special to me because it kind of takes me back home just a little bit. Georgia. Georgia. Ashes to Ashes sold only 70,000 copies as a single and a little less as an album. Clearly the selling of Terry Gibbs is faltering. The critical mix of voice, record, and marketing is not quite right. If Terry is going to be a superstar, MCA will have to find her rightful place in the market, a place where they can sell Terry Gibbs. When we sign an artist to MCA Records, we believe in that artist and we're prepared to commit a lot of money and a lot of time to work with the artist and build a career and, and all of us make some money. There's a, there's a certain burden to it as far as having another hit record. Uh, so many people's lives are affected. I've actually said sometimes, why? Why am I in the music business? Why didn't somebody just beat me when I wanted to get involved in it and tell me that I couldn't do it? And yet, there are other times when it's worth it. Uh, when, when everything that I go through is worth it. Well, I said, Georgia. Six months after Ashes to Ashes was released, MCA decided to replace Ed Penny as Terry Gibbs' producer. This program was presented by WGBH-TV, which is solely responsible for its content. Enterprise is co-produced with Learning Corporation of America.